So a lot of what I like to use in CT when I'm using a viewer is the multiplanar reconstructions because the we're doing a lot of these, you know, of course, standing, and uh, that's a wonderful thing because first of all, we can scan a horse um, sometimes within 15 minutes. I can have it down in the surgical standing surgery area shortly after that, performing either an oral exam or taking some detailed um, plain film radiographs of areas that we need for surgical planning along with what we've captured in the CT and be starting a surgery within 45 minutes of that horse becoming sedated. So that's really cool that we've come to that point in practice where we can actually perform the CT and be doing surgery right on the same sedation episode. Um, but when you put the horse in the CT scanner standing, sometimes they're a little crooked or they're, they're well sedated, they're not moving, but they're not exactly positioned very straight. And that can create problems when you're looking at just the native images. And we're gonna talk about multi-planar reconstructions because we can compensate for that and straighten them out. And the first thing we have to understand are what are the three-dimensional images that we typically see. The first one would be the transverse image. And this is as if we've cut the horse's head in a cross-sectional view. So in this, we can see the sinus compartments here, the nasal passages, here's your bullas of the nose and the rostral maxillary sinus. And in this horse, we can see that there is bone lifting off of this tooth. We've got a sinusitis going on as well, but this is gonna be a problem with this tooth. But we've, we're looking at this in a transverse. The next one then is the sagittal view where we're slicing the horse's head kind of longitudinally. And this we can use to look at all the teeth together. We can look for diastomata between teeth. We can look for horizontal and vertical bone loss when we start to talk about periodontal disease. But this is a view that can be made uh, in the multiplanar reconstructs to give us a sagittal view. And the next one then is the dorsal, or um, some people call it the coronal, but uh, in veterinary medicine, it's quite widely called the dorsal. This is where we can actually look straight down on all of the endodontic chambers of the teeth. So when you, these images are made with the computer based on the volume of information that you've gleaned with the CT unit. And when we go then to what does that screen look like? And you can see in this, actual case that this horse wasn't exactly straight in the CT. You can see there's some changes in where we can see the eye here and we can't see it here. The teeth, we can kind of see the clinical crown of one and the other here. And then the horse you can see in this um, dorsal view was actually not straight. So just a little bit on this is this purple line is your transverse view. This blue line is gonna be how you're slicing for your dorsal and the yellow line is going to be what you're slicing for your sagittal. So I know that might be a little bit confusing, but we're gonna move on here and show you how this all functions. So the next one then is where I've corrected for all of this. And you can see now that we are cutting more for our sagittal right through the dental quadrants, but we could also adjust this so that we can see all of the teeth at once here. We've lined this up to be perpendicular so that the dorsal view is right um, in the same parallel plane as the palate and then we're perpendicular to the palate so that we can look at the individual teeth nicely without getting part of one tooth and part of another tooth in the same transverse slice. So this is just a little video of that happening. And you can see as my mouse moves around, so this was a, a video that I made as I corrected that and, and came up with the image that we saw before. So you're gonna see us be able to um, adjust so we're gonna grab the rotation device here and I'm gonna spin the horse so that I can get it lined up. And then as you can see, as we move the axis over the dorsal, how our transverse planes and our sagittal planes started to straighten out. And now I'm gonna tell the dorsal line on the MPR to flatten out. Now you can see all of the teeth together, but as I turn that back to where it was, you can see how we lose that. But there's a good reason sometimes to reposition this line so that we're actually following a tooth. So say, let's go look at the number 11 tooth that angles distally. And we're gonna, a lot of times wanna be right on that tooth. So here we're gonna look at the nine so we can see those coming into view nicely. And then as we go back a little bit farther, 
and we want to look at the 11s because you can see here we're seeing part of the 10 and part of the 11. So I can angle that back. And now I'll be able to scroll back through the slices a bit and get both of the 11s individually there so that I can compare right from left. And this is if you double tap on that particular image, it blows it up into full screen. So I just wanted you to see how useful and how powerful CT can really be for looking at things. It's not just scrolling through a bunch of transverse slices that came out of the image, out of the machine to look at, and especially when we're talking about teeth that have five pulp horns in each one, a common chamber and the maxillary teeth, three root canals and two infundibula. It's just so much information in each tooth that we need to examine that with being able to put this into the multiplanar reconstructs and actually angle this so that we can see up through a tooth on say the dorsal plane and here I'm correcting for even the shape of the mandibles by moving that yellow line so that I can see all of the mandibular teeth when I'm actually evaluating for periodontal disease. So it's a it's a really powerful feature that we can use in CT. And the bottom line is that when the native image of this horse came in from the unit and you would just scroll through the native DICOMs, you could see that this is part of the occlusal surface of one tooth and then we're picking up a little bit of the apex of the other. And that was just how the horse's head was in the, the CT unit. Because um, if we go back to this, if the head is angling down a bit and the CT is slicing them in this region, what you're gonna do is clip off part of one tooth and part of the next. So when we go to this, uh, image and look at what we've done in the MPR, you can see that now we're able to look at each tooth. And the nice thing about this is that we can compare right and left. So hopefully there's a normal tooth in this horse on one side and an abnormal on the other. And when we compare them, you can easily see that here's our problem with the sinusitis involved there. So hopefully that kind of helps people understand how powerful CT can be in all the different planes that we can put and, and uh, glean from this to look at individual structures.